Zumi's prayers, the grace of autumn's face grown pale. Living this amber autumn, the leaves drift down upon my head. The harvest is done, abundant gold crackling in its heaps. A red rustling sweeps by. The late torn leaves turn to full maturity and racing to their molt. All enters the economy, the wheat to market, squirrels in their usual surreptition. Colors dress the earth more than any other time, and children rake and leap in heaps. The sweaters and scarves bear against the frosty winds, and all of a crunchy, earthy fragrance. A chilly, crispy changing turns the calendar leaf. Winter stares bare, Maples shudder in brilliant hues, their eulogy. It is an altogether brilliant canvas, a saying of goodbye. You know how this is, the crystal moon, the red branch of the passive autumn, the crackling fires and pyres of large logs, as if everything exists to carry me to you. Little boats that sail toward those isles of yours that wait for me. Before this time, nothing was my own. I wavered through the streets. Nothing mattered or had a name. The world was made all of air, which waited. There were tunnels where lived the moon, questions that existed in the sand. All was empty, dead, mute, fallen, abandoned, and decayed. It all belonged to someone else, to no one. Yet beauty and poverty filled the autumn plentiful with gifts. Swaddled in pumpkins, the hillsides carved the sky, the air wild with leaves. The earth is inhaled in one smell, the ripeness of the earth and death. Tawny leaves and withered hedges, empty vines and poets staggering phrases to the dying sun. Was here some catastrophe? the peasants slumping through the forests and birds of great herds departing. No one said this was the time, yet was the time of leaving known. Other lands were dreamed, wild and strange visions beckoning. We expect to be sad in fall, it is a premonition. We too are bare against the wind and the cold wintry light. Remember one's innocence, one's exuberance. These pass by together. A reverence of winter establishes pleading perseverance. The grace of autumn's face grown pale. For thought, it is the season of beginning. Last year's mistakes wiped clean by summer. It is autumn which cries out, you must be born again. Is the darkness descending? in the autumn afternoon of life? Do the leaves hold to stubborn obstinacy, now weak and impotent? Thus it is with men under the general name of death. Be men otherwise than renewed by your spirit, and in other things never so wise, knowing, learned, and skillful. In spiritual things they are dark, blind, ignorant, unless they are renewed in the spirit of their minds by the Holy Ghost. All of us know scientists, executives, judges, all of great success whose mask is this, their accomplishments laid over the face of their person. Shall they march blindly down the dark tunnel of this ignorance? If this evocative season evoke not melancholy, then where shall true desire be found? True desire is to be the person of our desiring, absent our mistakes and remembrance of them, rising again from the womb of our mother, that we were that leaf, looked to the sky and glad of life. And when it was time to leave, gracefully we knew life was a gift. And not by reason, but by revelation, saw that life would be again offered. We do love the earth, our life in it, and yet see the time of passing, and would wish to know what is next. If our first and last breath be prodigal, we shall never see the Father. 
Autumn of all seasons requires the least of us but to dwell in it. Thus, there amidst its trimming, the leaves, the fire, the fragrance, the aching feelings that accompany them, we do know we shall not be born again from the earth, but only from heaven above. Amen.